Today, I'm gonna show you how to use a smart object to create an ad in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm so excited about today's episode. We're gonna be taking an image, turning it into a smart object, and then transforming it onto an iPad. We're basically figuring out how we can make any image, whether this is a logo, whether it's an image you have. We're gonna show you how to put it on an iPad. The same techniques apply whether you wanna put it on a billboard or anything else. This is perfect for anyone who's looking to create a mock-up of an image or an ad and see what it would look like in real space. Using a smart object is gonna allow us a lot more flexibility when it comes to transforming and editing our image. Not only that, but we're gonna show you how to use smart filters with our smart object to control the level of Gaussian blur on an image even after you apply the blur. It's gonna be an awesome episode. All right guys, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So we've got three images we're working with. This is our base image here, and this is the image I'd like to place on the iPad screen. So if you've got a couple images open, the easiest way to transfer them is to use your move tool and then hit shift, click and drag from one image to another. And there we go. Now we have this other image in our document. Perfect. Let's go ahead and hit F for full screen. And that's going to allow me to actually like see what I'm doing a little bit better. And my goal here is to place this image. This is, by the way, it's a screenshot for the ultimate guide to retouching if you haven't noticed by now. Um, and we actually use this for real. Like the reason why we created this episode was because we really did want to pe show people how you could like download our tutorials and use them anywhere. So we took one of our staff members, this is Asa. We photographed him here just using a regular iPad. And then for the ads for our actual tutorial, we took this screenshot and we put it on the iPad to make it, you know, see like, hey, you really can watch this anywhere. But we didn't actually load it onto the iPad reel. It's just an image to get the idea across. So we actually did use this and that's where the image, like that's where the whole episode comes from. So just keep in mind, there are a lot of uses for this. So we're gonna take this image and transform it onto this iPad screen. Now, before I do, there are a couple of things. Let's just zoom into the iPad screen. You can see it's a little bit out of focus, right? So I know my image here, it's much too sharp. It doesn't look like it's gonna fit with this slightly out of focus iPad here. Not only that, but I've gotta fit it inside of this little boundary, which is gonna require a layer mask. And I'm gonna to try to figure out how to get some of these fingerprints on over top of the image as well to make it really look like it's fitting in. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is transform this guy, this layer one here, into a smart object. Now it's really easy to do. Just right click and go to convert to smart object. There we go. All right, so here's how a smart object works. By creating a smart object, it actually creates like a reference image. Now you can transform this image all you want to and it's not going to affect the original. And that's why using a smart object is super important for these things because let's say you wanna make it small, you wanna rotate it, you wanna do all these things and then maybe you wanna change it and make it back big again. A smart object is gonna allow you to do that without destroying the quality of the image. So let's see that at work. Okay, I'm gonna hit Command T to transform this, and then we're gonna make this like teeny tiny, like that big. There we go, and hit Enter. Now, normally, if you made an image that big, and then you wanted to like make it bigger again, you'd lose a lot of quality, right? But because it's a smart image, you keep all the quality. So let's hit Command T, transform that, and let's make this back big again, and hit Enter. And you can see it, it's the original quality. So this is, again, when you're transforming things, moving them and putting them into space, use smart objects, it's gonna help out a ton. Okay, well let's go ahead and get this object transformed right over here. So we're gonna hit Command T to bring up our transform, and I'm gonna bring my bottom left corner to match the bottom left corner of the screen that I actually want it on. Okay, now I'm gonna hold down my Shift key and click on the top right corner, and that's gonna allow me to bring it smaller or larger, but it's gonna maintain the same aspect ratio, which is what we want. All right, and we're gonna figure out about where we want it. There we go, so that's about the size that looks pretty good. Next, what we're gonna do is rotate our whole image to fit what's going on in the iPad here. Okay, now to rotate it, we've got our point right here in the center. This is our like position point. Basically, if I'm gonna rotate, right now it's gonna rotate around the center. You can see if I do that, it does. Now if I take this point and move it, let's say I move it right over there, now it's gonna rotate around that point, which is really cool. 
Let's say I move it to the bottom left, now it's rotating around that point. Again, very helpful. And if you want to, just for fun and giggles, <laughs> I'm not gonna cuss on Flurm, um, you can click any of these points here. So this is your middle right here, okay? That's a pivot point around the middle. This is your top right. There we go, and here's your top left, just in case you were wondering what that is for. All right, so let's go ahead and rotate that into the, there we go, into place. Hold down shift, and I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. All right. There we go, and we'll go ahead and make it a little bit larger. All right, cool. Now this is a little bit too large for my screen, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and shrink this down just a little bit. There we go. All right. Looking good. So you can see how changing the pivot point makes it really easy to actually adjust what the image is that you wanna line up onto the screen. All right, let's go ahead and finish our adjustments. So now that we've got the image pretty much in place, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the control or the command key, and I'm gonna start clicking on my sides here. And this is gonna allow me to start bringing this image into perspective. So I'm gonna bring that right about there, control or command, and we're gonna pull this up here, and basically bring our corners around to where it's in just per into perspective. So again, holding control or command, I'm gonna click on this corner, bring it right to about there, and my whole goal here is to make each of these corners line up with the corners on my iPad. There we go. There we go. And this one will be right about there. Very cool. So let's hit enter and we'll see it's in position now. It looks like, yeah, that kind of looks like it's on an iPad. Now, keep in mind, we still have to add a blur to this. We have to remove the thumb and we have to add some prints, but you can see the majority of the work has already been done. All right, guys, let's go ahead and create a layer mask and apply that Gaussian blur. So to create a layer mask, I'm just gonna click right here on my layer mask button and we're gonna zoom in. I'm gonna use my brush tool and I'm just gonna paint black with my brush. I don't need anything super fancy here, just a black paintbrush and we're just gonna layer mask this away. All right, there we go. We'll make a nice small brush for the edge there. Now, if you wanted to create you know, a nice advanced selection, you can take some time and do that too. But most of the time, especially for mockups like this, I find just using a soft edge brush and spending a little bit of time, you can create a layer mask that looks really nice. All right, there we go. Nice and seamless. Just paint back his thumb a little bit. Okay, great. So the thumb is there. We just painted away with a layer mask, but you can see it's a little bit too sharp. You know, like it doesn't look like it's actually in the photo because the photo is a little bit, it's got that blur going on and the photo itself is a little bit too sharp. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to click on this layer and we're gonna go to filter, down to blur and to Gaussian blur. Okay, now here's a great thing about using the smart objects, and this is another reason why we're using the smart objects. Well, let's go ahead and say that, what if I wanted a blur like, oh, I think that looks great, and I hit okay. Now, normally you'd be stuck, that blur would be stuck on there forever, but because we turn this into a smart object, we can now use smart filters, and it automatically loads them. So the Gaussian blur is now a smart filter. So create a smart object first, and then those filters you apply will become smart filters, which you can adjust later. So here's what that actually looks like. We've got our image, and now you can see smart filters and Gaussian blur, which is so cool. Now if you're like, you know what? That's way too blurry. I didn't need that. I didn't need it to be that blurry. What you can do is just double click right here on Gaussian blur, and you can change this after the fact. This is amazing, guys. You can change this like a year, two years down the line. It doesn't really matter when you do it. There we go, let's say hit okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now it actually looks like she's on the screen, which is pretty much exactly what we want. All right, cool. So we can see how the Gaussian blur actually makes it look like it's in the photo. Now the last thing we wanna do to make this like just really look good, I wanna see if I can take some of the fingerprints that are on the original iPad screen and transfer them over the top. It's gonna make it super, well, it's just gonna make it look really good. Okay, well to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and make this layer invisible. Okay, then we're gonna click on our background layer and I wanna figure out a way to kinda like turn a selection, like make a selection out of these little fingerprints. Now the easiest way to do this is go to select up here and down to color range. And I'm gonna simply select right here on the color range, that's the actual like thumbprints in my image. 
Now, if you want to see what you're doing a little bit better, check your selection preview here, go down to something like grayscale, and there you can see what it's actually going to be selecting. Now, I can bring up my fuzziness a little bit, and you're seeing like, oh, cool, it's actually selecting more of like the fingerprinted areas. You can see what's going on here. So let's hit OK there. And now those are the fingerprinted areas that are actually selected, right? Pretty cool. What we're going to do, I'm going to create a, I'm going to go ahead and make this layer visible. We're going to create another layer on top of this. Now, my selection is still active here, guys. So I could paint black or white or red or whatever. It's all just going to be inside this selection. You can see like that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a nice bright color that's actually in my image here. This is actually part of the reflection, like a light blue. Let's go ahead and desaturate that a little bit to look like fingerprint. Okay, and now my selection is still active. I'm just going to paint a little bit over top of my image. There we go. That looks good. Now, Command D is going to allow me to deselect. You can see that looks like fingerprints. Okay, let's change this from something like normal down to screen. And there you can see it's just blending in a little bit better. And then we'll just lower our opacity. There we go. And now it looks like there's the fingerprints and all that stuff on top of the image that we superimposed in there, which is insane. It's so... So cool. So anytime you're doing like a transfer, if there's like a, a texture or like a patina or something on the original surface, you can always select that color and pop it back over top of your image to make it really look like it's blended in. All right, guys, the iPad screen is pretty much there. Now there's one more really cool thing I want to show you with a smart object. Now let's say I wanted to edit the image that's inside of the iPad screen, but I still want it to be blurred. I still want it to be like behind these smudges, but I want to edit what's in the side that image. Now you can do this with smart objects. This is the only way to do it, guys. Basically, the same layer here, you just wanna double click right on the thumbnail. Only if it's got that smart object, okay? This is not gonna work any other way. Double click on that thumbnail there, and it's gonna go ahead and open the image right here for you. It's gonna open it, and you can actually edit that image. So let's see about what we wanna do. I'm gonna create like a, uh, let's bring this down here. Let's go ahead and slap the Flurn logo on there. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. We'll just put the Flurn logo on to this image. Let's hit Command T and go ahead and scale it right down there. Okay, somewhere we, we can see it. Now, all we have to do here is save and exit this document and it's gonna automatically update on our other image. So let's go ahead and see. I'm gonna hit Command S to save, Command W to close. All right, now let's go back to our other document and you can see automatically it's, it's updated, it's so cool. And not only that, the blur, because the blur is a part of the small, smart filter, check that out. The blur is showing up and the smudges are right there on top of it. And if I wanna take that flurn off, I'll just double click right here, turn this layer off, save it, and then close it again and check that out. It's not on there anymore. That is insane, guys. This is gonna be such a great tool for you doing mock-ups. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out. We're gonna crop our image just a little bit to give it like a little bit more like a, um, there we go, like a little banner ad. We use this as a banner ad on Flurn.com. So let's go ahead and crop that. Now we're gonna pop some text on here too. We've got some text for our, it's for our actual ad. We really did make this. <laughs> um, watch anywhere so people can see that you can watch Flurn tutorials anywhere. And there we go. Let's hit F for full screen and there we go, we're completely done with our ad. So we can see we've taken a regular photo, we took a screen capture and plugged it into the iPad, threw some text over there, and you've got yourself a really cool ad using smart objects. All right guys, and that's all there is to it. Just follow these key steps. When you got a couple different documents open, just use the move tool to click and drag one onto another. Then you're gonna wanna right click and go ahead to convert to a smart object. This is gonna give you those advanced editing features. After you convert to a smart object, it's time to transform this document into place. Hold the control or the command key to click on any of the corners and drag them into place. And don't forget, you can change that control point, which will help you rotate your image around any axis. Now that your image is a smart object, go ahead and apply your blur. Now, because it's a smart object, it's going to be a smart blur as well, which means you can change this at any point in time. For added effect, we showed you how to add the fingerprints over top of the iPad screen by going to select, down to color range, and then just painting with a light color. We changed that layer blending mode to screen and lowered the opacity till it looked perfect. All right, guys, and to top it off, we showed you how to use that smart object to go and edit that original document, save it, and have it be reflected on the iPad screen, blurred, and behind the fingerprints. Such a cool addition. 
All right, guys, add some text and you're good to go. You got yourself an ad. Thank you so much for watching Flurn. It's super cool. You can hang out with me and watch me create ads. This was actually, it was super fun to do and we actually used it for Flurn.com, like within our company. So it was like, yeah, this is an awesome tutorial. It's got so much application. I would love to see your guys' versions of, if you do this, you put your logo on the billboard or whatever, I'd love to see it. Head over to Flurn.com and post it in a comment to this very episode. And if you like what we're doing here at Flurn, don't hesitate to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can just hit that big, beautiful red button on your screen now and subscribe. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea or a comment or just you wanna say hi to me, you can do so in a comment right down below. All right guys, thanks so much. Flurn you later. Bye everyone. Leave me comments, leave me comments. <laughs> Champions of the world. I'm gonna show you how to use smart objects to create an... All right, guys, I'm excited about using... What are you doing? All right. Overtaking evil. We're gonna take... I don't know about that. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me all up on Photoshop.com. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> not yet. Dang right, it's gonna be an awesome episode. It's from Flurn.com. <laughs> All they make is awesome episodes. <laughs> yeah, duh. All right, so here's how it works. By creating a smart object, you basically create... Okay, so here's how it... Champions of the world.